Hackathon, um, 30 seconds, what's happening? Right now, uh, yeah, so we, uh, uh, I mean we, we launched a lunar net and now we're basically, uh, we found some bugs that are good because there's a lot of users and now we can see some bugs and basically we are now fixing all of these bugs so uh, basically mostly finished with that we're going to have uh, an updated version of uh, the lunar network uh, maybe today or tomorrow. So I think we're still fixing some minor bugs in the um, Luna testnet. For example, I'm working, or yeah, I'm working on um, on the WebRTC connections right now. It seems like Safari sends some non-standard messages out there, and other browsers reject them. So we try to fix that. So maybe, as some of you know, we were working on own um, on an own barcode in a hexagon shape instead of QR codes because they look nicer and they um, they keep our bonding with the hexagon shapes. Um, but the thing is that it's not a standardized um, barcode. For example, if we would like um, to get included in the UI of Coinbase, for example, um, then it would also need to use those specialized QR codes, which you probably won't do. So to make it easier for other companies, uh, to include NIMIC, now we're using QR codes instead of our own codes, but I'm working on um, improving those a little bit. Más grande por dentro que por fuera. That's it. Like, you know, people like my grandma used to say that when somebody ate, ate a lot. It's más grande por dentro que por fuera. Like, um, I wrote about fonts. Like, the, um, we're using a way, a uh, font. Um, and like on the web, fonts are... Uh, they suck because you need to download the font before right. the browser can start to render anything. Right, right. And that slows down the performance a lot. And uh, now we're using system fonts. There's a new command that uh, enables you to use your system's font. Like for example, if you're on iOS, iOS already has a beautiful font. It's called San Francisco, I think. And um, you can use that on the web without installing it just by using the system font. And uh, okay. we're using that to have like beautiful fonts that are very fast. Yeah, and the second one was about our identicons. Uh -huh. um, so identicons are in general a visual representation of a hash or like of any kind of data. Um, in cryptocurrencies, identicons are used for um, a visual representation for addresses. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we did a lot of research on identicon libraries, and then um, we found RoboHash, and RoboHash actually generates random robot, yeah, robots. Robots. Yeah. Uh, um, with a database of um, predefined body parts, like uh, like ten different uh, bodies, ten different heads, ten different noses, ten different mouths, ten colors. different eyes, and colors too, right? Colors too. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you can assemble a random robot from from that. And we we did a lot of uh, improvements on that because um, the original RoboHash um, library is uh, for servers, mm -hmm. so the rendering happens on the server. We cannot do that because in a wallet app. Um, you don't want to you don't want to call a server to render your identicon because you would need to tell the server your address, such that the server is able to render your your identicon, and that would compromise your security, uh, your privacy. Gotcha. Yeah? That makes sense, yeah. And that's why you want to render uh, the identicon on the client side in the browser, in the browser, such that your address never leaves your browser. Right. And therefore, we needed to compress the database of of these images that uh, the robots are assembled of, uh, in a way such that we can ship it to the browser. Ah, and before, like the original library, the, uh, the database is about 3.5 megabytes, and we brought it down to uh, 35 kilobytes. Wow. So, a factor of 100 um, improvement. So 
Um, there are multiple libraries that we use to build our wallet. For example, the Identicon library, then there is a QR encoder, then there is a QR scanner, and so on. Like Lots of small libraries that um, our wallet is composed of. And um, for all of these libraries, we didn't find a solution that actually fits our needs. So it should be fast, and it should be modern, and it should work really, really well. And um, we just found like amateur libraries that are not they don't quite fit uh, the standard that we want to deliver and um, that's why we improve those libraries and um, we want to open source every of this library uh, every of those libraries for for the world so that other people can use it in their projects uh, independently of Nimic right. because this way um, we actually get something back from the community because if other people are using our libraries in their projects they will start to improve on it because they have an incentive to imp improve yeah, this yeah. And then the library itself will improve and then our wallet will improve because it's using that library. What a wonderful world. Okay, so uh, next step is going to be really work out a plan towards mainnet, really list out all the features and all the stuff that we need to do to to really work, work uh, go towards mainnet in like a really focused manner, basically. What a wonderful world. How's it going? Marvin. Hi guys. Hey. Hey Richie. Oh, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, uh, take two. Thanks. <laughs> hey, are you taller? You're like... Are you? you're like yeah. Maybe a little bit. Well, a little bit. <laughs> you weren't you were taller than me. Oh. Now you're taller than me. <laughs> yeah, hey. Hey. hey! How, How are you doing? doing? Long time. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> You saw him growing up. Uh, last yeah. time I last time I see him, he was not taller than me. Now he is. Now I I, I noticed because I had to look up. I'm like, you're taller.